This, this is Samantha Cole, and you're watching the Break It Down Show. Yes, you are. This is a great topic. I um, I grew up through all the stuff that you talk about in your fantastic book. Awesome. <laughs> How sex changed the internet. So, I mean, I uh, had to do summer school uh, one year because shame on me. I wasn't as, as good a, a student as I was supposed to be. And I learned how to learn. I was introduced and could do some basic programming on a trash 80. And and so you just keep on going down. You know, I can remember in the 70s being in someone's house when they got pong. All of these things. And you, you don't talk about pong necessarily, but all of these things use that. Um, my buddy, I used to work at Costco and he was telling me all about. Uh, and this is. 93 right so he was talking about the different boards that he was on the programming and the html stuff he was doing and i'm like i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> why are you spending all day on this He's like all day and all night as it be all bloodshot and i thought what in the world is this you know because because when computers first came out for like the mat like you know like the <clears throat> like the 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 basic computer you could put in your house in the late 80s they're like mm -hmm. you could store your recipes on this and yeah. stuff like that it was very, very, very simple. And so you would type and then it became word product. Anyhow, so you go through this whole process here again. Here's the book, everybody, How Sex Changed the Internet. And I'm just dying to talk to you about this because there's a, there's so much in it. And and I was reading the book and I just got all these little spots bookmarked and everything. Thanks for coming on the show, Samantha. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk about this. All these stuff. I'm so glad that you were there for a lot of what's in this book because I am I was writing from a perspective of you know, listening to people who were there, I am in my mid thirties and I wasn't there for a lot of it. I got on the internet when I was in my uh, teens in the nineties and, you know, I missed a lot of this stuff and you know, I feel nostalgic for a time that I wasn't even there for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. My, uh, my daughter's mother, Jennifer, we were married for a while and she also was a computer person. And so we deployed together in the late nineties, 96. Mm -hmm. And, um, in, I was a spy, right? And so it was the beginning of the digital age for my kind of work. When I trained, it's like, you're going to need a pencil and a piece of paper and a typewriter. We had to yeah. take a test. And it was like, oh, my gosh. And then within an instant, digital cameras, field, key, you know, like we could walk around the field with, uh, um, you know, when I say the field, I mean the combat zone, yeah. uh, a laptop, a mobile printer, a mobile scanner. All these things came out like in the in this distance of like five years. This is off the shelf stuff, too not even army grade things. And then email started happening and Usenet expanded into, I gosh, I can't remember all the different protocols, but there've been so many of them and you are a hundred percent right. Sex is always at the forefront of all of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. A lot of those, um, those systems like the bulletin board systems and Usenet, uh, people were you know, learning about uh, sex and sexuality while they were kind of talking to people all around the world and they were exposed to so many different experiences um yeah so it was definitely kind of from the jump people were like we're going to use this for sex <laughs> <laughs> yeah so let's not get into this sex thing quite yet let's talk a little bit about your uh work to to gather all this because yeah you did go you went way back in time like pre-internet you know back you know just like when there was a web and two computers talking and you talk about yeah. the very first word transmitted over the web talk a little bit about your process of gathering all this and a lot of these people are still alive by the yeah. way so you can just yeah. talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i i did i talked to quite a few of them and it was definitely um it was really fun to kind of like revisit these times uh with people because they were just so excited to kind of uh, you know go down memory lane about some of this stuff um but yeah so so the book kind of starts out like you said like with uh you know people were first inventing the internet um, the late late sixties, early seventies, and kind of figuring out what it was going to be for, um, and of course it was you know it was the early days. It was for military op uh, operations, and you know making those communications go a lot smoother and across distance and uh, things like that. So that's that's kind of where the book starts off, and the process for for doing that kind of research often was just talking to people who were there, um, and also reading uh, what people wrote who were there. Um, I'm so thankful that people uh, kept archives of uh, what they were up to at the time and, you know, what they were researching and uh, the kind of funny little quirks that they found and the conversations that happened online. Um, it was all, a lot of it was a huge labor of love to archive that stuff. Um, and I'm really thankful they did. <laughs> and I also ended up doing a lot of archiving myself, you know, saving things um, so that, you know, I could go revisit it later and then hopefully anyone researching this into the future could save a lot of this stuff. Cause it just, 
um, it gets erased. Like it gets people mm-hmm. stop paying, you know, their registrar bill, registrar bill, or, you know, they, they stop paying for their website. Um, and it just goes down, it goes away forever. And we lose that. And I think that's such a shame. Um, so yeah, the, the process was definitely a big lift archive wise. <laughs> I had a, notes, just like a crazy person all over the place. Yeah. Um, but it was so fun. The most fun part was just talking to people about you know, what they did, uh, back then. So, yeah, it, it was crazy, you know, living, going through this time and, uh, you know, like late nineties, you could, you could just chat with someone and there were no real profiles. Like you had to get yeah. to know the person mm-hmm. real time while you type with them. And, um, it wasn't at all uncommon. All of a sudden you find yourself in a sexual situation and you're like, yeah. is this cheating on my wife? I've been talking <laughs> it, you know? And she's like, I don't know either. We, you know, we're, you, so you're sort of exploring it in real time. And really, the person could be anything they wanted to be. Uh, yeah. So, like, the person who was typing is totally different, potentially, and likely mm-hmm. than the person you interacted with. And you're just wrapping your head around all of this experience. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, there were quite a few stories like that the, in um, multi-user domains or dungeons, depending on what you called them. Uh, these are purely text-based um, chat rooms. So you were talking in a more real-time in a way than you would on like bulletin board system, which is just posting and then waiting for someone to reply, you know, maybe a day later. Um, yeah. So these rooms, these uh, MUDs, as they were called, um, were often, often turned sexual because, um, you know, people were making relationships in them, making friendships, you know, connections with people that were purely um, text. So a lot of it was your mind filling in the blanks uh, and using your imagination about what this person um, looked like or sounded like or what their personality was like. Um, and yeah, some of them, sometimes they got into tricky situations. I mean, there was one where it was a, a guy fell hopelessly in love with uh, what he thought was, you know, the woman of his dreams and they'd never met. Um, you know, the, the person described themselves as, uh, you know, this perfect kind of like nerd girl, um, manic pixie dream girl. And uh, she turned out to be um, just a, a guy on the internet who was married and he went to visit her at the time and found out from his wife that uh, he had been living some kind of alter ego yeah. situation online, yeah. which is funny now, but it was really like tragic at the time. I think it was like, oh my God, I was going to propose to this woman. And now I'm like, what am I going to do now? <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And, and we did sort of understand this, but the, um, I think the thing that we've had to deal with and we're still dealing with is, is the, uh, the physical chemical reaction inside of us, dopamine or whatever other mm-hmm. uh, things that, that get pushed forward, you know, because the computer is, is, uh, is, is creating this a uh, false reality. Right. And we respond to it in reality. And yeah. that whole thing, you're like, man, this, you know, I don't know who this person is. They could say anything. And if you were able to kind of maintain that, that wall between reality and, and the computer, yeah, you, you were pretty well insulated, but you could easily still get addicted. And then, yeah, the poor folks who just believe the whole thing and jump right in yeah. the portal and are hanging out with Tron and, you know, they, <laughs> they don't tend to fare as well. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It's, you know, it's hard to not feel totally immersed in that situation. And it was also new. So, you know, Mm, um, this was a connection that people hadn't experienced before. Um, If you were going to do text-based communication, you were, there was lag in between. It Mm. was, you know, you're posting to a board or you were writing a letter, (laughs) you're writing an email, Um, you know, all of a sudden to be in this situation where like, it's very social. Um, There's these pressures, uh, I think was, yeah. Rock people's worlds. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. For those that didn't get a chance to experience that thing, you, know, you would go into, like, in this case, a chat room, and there would be all these people, and they would become your friends. And you're like, oh, there's, you know, whatever, Jeff 2020, or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. Right? Whatever the username is going to be. But then, yeah, you could you could sneak off into a little private room mm-hmm. and have, like, a little mini soiree, or you could, you know, and there was, like, a little code in the way you typed so that uh, and a lot of it's in the open but it, but it's a different language let's say and yeah. You're like yeah let's go off and let's go you know uh give each other a, a sexual thrill even if it's just yeah. in our heads let's go do that yeah. what a uh, what a crazy thing i mean you think about like <laughs> i don't know and then as you grow up you know you look at younger folks and a lot of people are, are use like the the letter designators for generations like i'm a gen x guy and we kind of mm-hmm. never 
never picked up an actual uh, moniker. You know, we just stayed Gen X. Yeah. But it seems like, you know, like millennial, sure, okay, we got to get that. But this next generation, they really are digital natives. I don't know why mm -hmm. that name hasn't become universal, but they, yeah. they are growing up in a totally different world. My daughter, who's right on the cusp of millennial, millennial and digital native, she could work a mouse when she was tiny, you know, not even like five years old, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, different. I see kids on the train with uh, like iPads and I don't really even know how to use an iPad. <laughs> and I'm like watching them like, oh, that's how you get to that setting. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, this child is in a stroller and is just like using a phone. Um, yeah, that's yeah. so wild to me. I mean, they're the stuff they're exposed to is just, I mean, you know, so different from, you know, how I grew up, how you grew up. Like it's mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. And then the pace of the advancements and, and, and it's, it's spherical, right? Like it's in every direction. There's software connecting things the capability of the software, the firmware, the hardware, it's just rushing forward in every single direction. And you're like, well, I can do anything in this marketplace, anything. Yeah. And so you look around at what comes forward. And again, you know, here is access to sex as like a horny little kid. If I could, uh, you know, tweak on the cable box, the channel changer right in between, uh, you could kind of <laughs> see HBO or Cinemax yeah. and see boobies laid at Yeah, night. grainy, yeah. like static in between. Yeah, yeah, like the, <laughs> the screen's trying to hold together, you know, you're like, yes, <laughs> boobs, you know, and so so we're so desperate as, as young boys, at least, to, yeah. to see this kind of stuff, and there it is, or maybe steal your dad's, uh, your friend's dad's, you know, Playboy or Hustler mm -hmm. magazine, but the internet is just an easier way where like a lot of the barriers are down and you're like, how do I get access to more of this nudity, more of this yeah. sex or this salaciousness? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It opened all of that up. I mean, I think definitely uh, it was <laughs> probably a boon to to teenage boys <laughs> all around the world when they could like stop trying to dial in to the right channel and start just like downloading it from the internet. I think. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I recall when the Jenny cam started and you mm. can watch this person and it was a, a, a and you did a great job of explaining it. It was like, it was live back then. This was live, mm -hmm. even though it was really not it's live. Like every not, three seconds or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and you, there was like a moral conundrum at the time. Mm -hmm. You're like one, uh, who cares what Jenny is doing? I don't know. Jenny. <laughs> there was two, like, should I be looking in? I'm not really a voyeur. And then, and then you look in and you're like, Yes, I am a voyeur. You know, I can't <laughs> stop watching yeah. pictures of this image, you know, and you're desperate like that lag. You were desperate for the next picture. I'm mm -hmm. only going to look at one more. Right. And then yeah. you, and then you're like, well, let me look at the next one. And, and so um, really, again, like that's all of this social programming that we're doing to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And no, I don't think anyone's doing this on purpose, but we're just we're realizing that we're craving the very next thing, the yeah. very next like the very next post comment all these things today are, are born in these moments that the jenny cam invented for us yeah yeah definitely the jenny cam is so interesting to me and that was during like um the days of like real world was new uh, right. reality tv was like a new thing and just like watching people do stuff in their house was a genre of entertainment <laughs> yeah. and now you have you know like twitch streamers just logging on to talk about nothing and Right. Um, you know, people turn on like streams just to like have like company in their house. Um, so I think that was definitely I mean, people weren't really uh, Jenny wasn't um, doing porn, but like right. just the fact that she was streaming her bedroom 24 seven with no cuts, no censorship. It was like people were watching that to catch something happening. It was like, will Jenny bring home her boyfriend? Will she change on camera? It's like. There was yeah. no censorship happening there. And that was part of her experiment was, uh, you know, will people watch this? And they did. And it was one of the biggest websites at the time. It's crazy. Did you speak with her? I didn't. Jenny actually um, has gone very much uh, dark. Like she doesn't have social media. Um, she talked to a podcast called Reply All recently mm -hmm. or like uh, recently as in like I think it was like five years ago or something. It was a while ago right. um, where, you know, she talked about this and that was kind of the, the first time in a really long time. And then also the last time for a really long time. And I don't think she's done anything publicly since. Um, but I think all of that kind of that pressure, and she talks about this, the pressure and the, the being watched constantly. Um, mm -hmm. 
just took a toll. It was like, this is actually not fun anymore to be watched and accused of like terrible things. And it became too public. And now she's just like, she has, she married someone with that, like with a very common last name. Her first name's Jennifer. It's like, you'll never find her. (laughs) Yeah. Gone. Yeah. There was in the late sixties, early seventies, there was a uh, documentary and it was like a real life, real world kind of thing and it was i think it was called american family and then they've done a couple of subsequent ones but they just they put cameras in on this family in real time and and the family became used to it and and they kind of captured this this real life of an american family but then um things didn't go well afterwards you know Mm. and then when they came back it's like the kids were all messed up and you know who knows why but these were like the first proto examples of this of this examination of reality yeah and and i don't think there was anything sexual on it it's been a long time since i've seen this thing but but it was very personal very intimate and then now you have the ability for like someone like danny ash to go (laughs) i'm gonna learn html and uh, and i you know, Asia Carrera, I remember all of these things. These were all things like, yes, these ladies are porn star, but however, she's got this fantastic website and you can look at it. And it mm-hmm. wasn't just primarily porn related, but it was a marvel <laughs> to see someone in charge of an, in an entrepreneurial way, their own life yeah. and making fabulous money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Danny Ash was the boss. Like she was so in charge and in control of her empire and it was you know, she was she was one of the very early ones who was like, I'm going to take this Internet thing seriously and I'm going to um, stop being beholden to, you know, like these you know, middlemen. Basically, I'm going to start right. putting it out there myself. It's going to be what I want to do. Um, she very famously never did any kind of like uh, sex scenes with men. Like it was all very like it was what she wanted to do. And right. it was what her friends wanted to do. Um, so she brought people on and, you know, there were guest appearances and things like that. Uh, and the same with Asia Carrera and Asia's still working and, you know, it's, it's just so cool to see um, the, the aspect that the internet brought to um, porn, especially because, you know, then people could actually take control of their own content. They owned that stuff. Like that was right. something they could keep control of. They could work on their own terms. Um, yeah. Yeah. Danny is like my hero. <laughs> I mean, did you talk to her uh, when you're? Danny is also very hard to get a hold of, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're I, know. Early, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, she, um, yeah, she's another one that's just like, she just was like, I'm done. I don't want to do it. Um, I don't think she was fully as like, I'm going to disappear intentionally, like um, right. Jennifer Ringley. But um, yeah, she's not really down to talk about a lot of the stuff. It seems, at least, I couldn't find her talking about it today. So Danny, if you're out there, call me. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure she'll be around and you can <laughs> call me someday. Um, <laughs> one of the other things about this, this spherical expansion of technology and everything is uh, for a while, at least with Danny and all the other uh, sites, she was the big one was mm-hmm. you were mailing a check to this person, like a physical yeah. check. And, and some people got into the, like, money transfer thing but a lot of people are like i'm not doing that yeah and then also on danny's end she's received fraudulent checks all the time yeah. gotta be right and so processing and this isn't like the day you take your phone you're like click 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 Doug, you were going down to the bank yeah you gotta take it to the bank <laughs> yeah, like, i have a thousand checks such it's a pain me. in the ass <laughs> <laughs> i mean just signing your name a thousand times because they'd actually want you to sign your name you yeah. know like, oh my gosh you think about that time and, and again like they were starting to make it so you could pay for things online. And if you were willing to trust it, you're like, I guess we'll just try. And then you would try it and it would work. And you're like, it worked that time. But after a while, (laughs) you're like, okay, this seems to be safe, but you didn't know. And and there was always news stories about, it's kind of like crypto. Now it's like, look at this. See, told you it's all fraudulent. But the reality is, is the market is, is moving that way Mm -hmm. at that time towards, um, and I remember like CC bill when that came out, that was supposed to be more the most secure billing way ever, right? And and now it would probably be silly, you know, yeah. how it encrypts things. But talk a little bit about the secondary industries that went along with sex. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the the financial industry I think has been a really interesting one, how it's reacted to um the internet and sex because uh porn and sex work for banks is considered high risk. 
Um, it's up there with like gambling and guns and things like that. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been tough just in the last, um, it's getting worse, but it's been in the last like 10 years, I think where it's gotten increasingly and increasingly worse for people to try to start businesses like that, um, to be a small entrepreneur and to set up uh, a sex based, uh, business online because you have to deal with the banks. Um, and you have to deal with them being afraid of what you're doing. Um, so you get shut down a lot. Uh, you know, just independent sex workers get their accounts shut down all the time mm -hmm. because uh, banks say, oh, just, you know, our system flagged you as fraudulent or sure. risky or whatever it is. And it's like they're working completely legally. Um, so what's the <laughs> what's the deal? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you see things like crypto where people are turning to that because the banks are failing them. Um, they're, you know, they're saying, I, I can't even keep, I'm unbanked. I can't even, you know, pay for my, my bills. I need to be able to pay my bills. Um, so yeah, it's whatever's going to happen with crypto will be interesting. Who knows? It's a mess right now, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's definitely an industry that's being pioneered by, um, by sex work and by sex workers because it's just out of necessity. Uh, they need a way to, to make money online. It's, yeah. The banks aren't picking yeah. up the slack. <laughs> And it, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, we can go a hundred directions from that, but that money aspect of it, right, is mm -hmm. is crazy. And, you know, the eruption of PayPal shortly, like after like mm -hmm. in the early thousands, you know, PayPal just explodes into this thing where, you know, and it, it grows, I don't, I guess not, not necessarily through sex, but a lot of it was through eBay and being yeah. able to pay for things, right? Mm -hmm. And you find these apps that become ubiquitous, like eBay is now, or um, like PayPal is now, it's, yeah. uh, it's interesting. One of the, um, I read a story a long time ago, and uh, I believe his name is PD from the insects uh, whole thing. And that took the live streaming and actually put the live in live streaming. And that's 100% sex and not like gentle sex. This is <laughs> yeah. bondage and, and, and pain and all these other things that are going on in there. Mm -hmm. But they were forcing, because they were so powerful and so successful, they were forcing that part of the marketplace forward. Like, we need more bandwidth. There'd be like instructions Hey, uh, quit chatting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they were trying to figure out how to make yeah. those images work. And it's yeah. and and this is not something that you would anticipate people like flocking to, but but they did. Yeah. 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 Learning about like the the ways that these kind of early um, internet webmasters had to because uh, there was so much um demand like people were coming to their site by the thousands which is a lot of people at the time um it sounds like not a lot right now but like right. if you consider you know the internet was still very small and not most households had it um you know they just were experiencing these huge influxes of people and then of course they didn't have the bandwidth they didn't have the the ability to keep mm -hmm. a site running keep their servers up people were crashing their servers because they just that was the thing to do on the internet <laughs> or it was a big thing to do on the internet. Um, yes. And, you know, they're having to like, then be like, okay, how can we pay for a bigger, uh, a better internet package? Or how can we kind of keep our right. own servers running? Um, so then they have to charge more and then, or charge at all. It's like a lot of them were just doing it for free at first. They were just like, this is fun. Um, and then it became not fun when people were like, how dare you shut down your website? How dare it crash? It's like, this is yeah. free. <laughs> Um, so then they start charging so they can make it better. And then people are like, how, how dare you charge me access? It's right. like, because there's so many people, um, you know, trying to beat the doors down to get to it. Um, you know, it's not so much, I don't think problem today. I think we've gotten thankfully better technology for that. Yeah. <laughs> but still, yeah. but it is crazy when you think about how fast, I mean, we're talking 20 years of time, mm -hmm. but 20 years in a business, you know, I mean, IBM has been around for forever. Wells Fargo has yeah. been around for 150 years, you know? Right. And so you look at 20 years, like, yeah, it's, it's a decent chunk of time. When, when you're talking about the bandwidth, there's also the bandwidth out to the end user. Right. And so, yeah. um, w when you're looking at like, do I jump on AOL? Do I just go to this local guy who's his own independent service provider, ISP yeah. and internet service provider and and you know you pay that person and then that guy's constantly got he's like i'm making all this money but i've got to constantly invest in more capacity more yeah. 
feed and everything because all these people are watching so much porn. <laughs> on I can't keep my servers up. You know, and it's like now, now, you know, hey, you're going to have to go get someone to dig you a fiber line. Right. You know, and so that part of the industry explodes. Right. And people started paying a lot of money for fiber and they were absolutely going to insects and all these other Danny's yep. and all these places. Yeah. 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 The demands for this stuff drove. I mean, we talk about like, you, I mean, I'm sure you've heard the old like saying that like, uh, porn invented like the VCR or the, right. the, the VHS tape. Um, and I think similarly porn invented a lot of the, the high speed internet that we have today. Yeah. And we have that to thank. We have they were being able to chat like this to thank uh, for these people who are starting these websites who were like, we need to make it fast. We need to make it better because right. people demand it. The one yeah. it. it used to be that you would go to a CD uh, video uh, rental place, you know, that probably had yeah. some, some it's uh, actual live people potentially or videos playing and, and, you know, a very uh, different experience than just being by yourself when yeah. you do this very primal uh, urge thing when you go out. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, like that, that killed that whole business. You don't see a roadside, a XXX. Not so movie. much. Yeah. You know, it's just not around anymore. Is it a better thing that we have this kind of at our own fingertips or, it, or was it better to, I mean, who knows, right? But <clears throat> is it better to force someone to have to like, I'm going to go to the porn store today, you yeah. know, and, and, like limit consumption because <laughs> like, I can't be there all the time. I can only rent seven movies. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of have that like limiter in place where you, right, you're not, yeah, you're not yeah. spending your whole day in the video store, probably. Who's going to see me here? You know, right. Kind of yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was another barrier is, you know, like right. I have to physically go in there. I have yeah. to park my car and be at the video store. Um, yeah, whether or not it's a good thing, I think there's uh, there's pros and cons. It's definitely been um, something, it's been something that people have had to really grapple with is like the, the access and like being able to do it all day mm -hmm. is just like, I think a lot of people really struggle with that. Um, and, you know, they, they struggle with guilt about that a lot of the times. And uh, I think that just makes it kind of like a cycle of like, you know, I'm guilty about it. So I feel bad. So I'm going to yeah. go turn to it. So I'm going to then feel guilty again. Um, but at the same time, it's like being able to access, uh, you know, sexual speech, porn, sex education, all these things. Um, but specifically, since we're talking about porn um, from home, um, really opened up the access to the industry to a lot more people beyond just like the people who are willing to go to the store and the people who are willing to go to the store were usually men because that was a very male dominated space um that you know women weren't comfortable just walking into without you know the shopkeeper saying something weird um you know it was you know it was very stigmatized to watch porn and it still is a little bit um or at least it was you know up until pretty recently um so yeah, I think being able to access, uh, you know, all of this stuff was is a great thing for a much wider array of people who, um, you know, maybe had never seen porn before, <laughs> never, you know. And I think you know, being able to to watch porn for a lot of people, it's very eye opening to say, you know, um, I other people are into what I'm into. Like I can feel good about what I like because. Sure. I see it reflected on screen. Um, so yeah, I think on the whole it's good, <laughs> but it's such a, you know, it's a balance, I guess. Gosh. And now that we, and, and now we're even balancing it, right? Like it's good in some ways, but um, I've seen a number of studies where kids are terrified to enter into relationships because yeah. they jump in the deep end, you know, like yeah. for me, it was walking through Kmart in the bra section and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know um, right. now you're like oh my god why do people want to do this to each other you know yeah. it, it can be horrific and it's available yeah. you google or bing any sex act pow video available instantly yeah. yeah i think yeah and i think that's um we kind of have this this very powerful tool in the internet to see so much um like you said like see some really kind of distasteful things or you know, I think um, people talk a lot about like violent porn or, um, you know, replicating what they see in very hardcore, aggressive, right. athletic, professional porn in the bedroom. And it's like, I wouldn't go drive my, you know, 
my Prius or whatever, like I see people in Fast and Furious driving their cars because those are professional stunt actors. Right. Right. Um, and if we don't talk about porn as a job that people do um, because they're professionals and they're paid to do it and they're doing a fantasy and it's hard work, that's, you know, what they're trained to do. Um, we don't talk about it in that way, then I think teenagers, especially like you said, um, get confused about, you know, is this how people have sex? Um, it's like, no, probably not. A lot of the time, like most of the time, <laughs> this is not the sex that most people are having that you see in porn. Um, and, you know, that's because they're paid to entertain yeah. um, and not to kind of and show fantasy, you. Right. right. It's fantasy. It's like, it's, you know, you're shooting porn in a way that like it's showing all the angles and you know, you're, you're positioning yourself in a really uncomfortable way so that the camera can get in there. And it's like, yeah. no one, if you are shooting just like at home porn, that would probably be boring. Like, no, you wouldn't be able to like use it as a fantasy. <laughs> right. Um, but you know, that's where sex education comes in and porn literacy and things like that, where we have to talk about, but people are scared to, to talk about porn and with teenagers, even though they're watching it. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's they're uh, definitely watching. <laughs> yeah, well, it, and then uh, the other day I was talking to someone. Um, they were going to maybe come on the show, and they were talking about how pornography is being shown in the school. And I'm like, you're going to have to explain more clearly what that means to you. Yeah. And he's like, you know, they're teaching kids about sex acts, and I'm like, well, yeah. sex is a sex act, so we need to do sex education. But like that whole conversation was, and it goes in both directions, charged with hyperbole. Like they're yeah. not going. What he described could be considered porn in schools if yeah. you took the worst situations. But right. if you're also talking about what do you do with this thing between your legs? Mm -hmm. I mean, I always say, like, they left us boys to our own devices. You know, like, like well, <laughs> yeah. I'm so crazy horny. And yeah. I'm too ashamed to admit that I masturbate, that I'm just going to go crazy, you know? Yeah. And, and so we didn't, no one taught us anything. I learned how to be a better boyfriend from listening to the, a lot of sports, that's jagged little pill. And I'm like, oh, I'm an asshole. I got to, <laughs> you know, because there's no. A lot is doing the Lord's work. Like, <laughs> yeah, like oh, man, I, I got to be a better person. Right. And so, so some of this stuff comes out through our own life experience. Yeah. But, you know, mm -hmm. because there is so much access, it's, it's got to be terrible. I mean, look, my, my kid's 25. She's old and junky. No one cares about her anymore. <laughs> but if you've got like a five-year-old right now, how in the world do you navigate phones and everything? It is insane. It's so hard. I don't know. I don't envy parents right now. I am like terrified of the thought of having to teach a kid about like the internet and making the decisions. Like, do I let my kid have access to the internet? At what point? My parents were just like, they didn't know what I was doing on the internet. They were like, you know, she's she's probably fine. She's smart. She doesn't give our address out. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like, it's everywhere. It's, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm looking uh, through your book, by the way, everybody should get it. It's really interesting. How sex changed the internet. There's a link. I'll put it right here down below. So you guys can see that in the comments. Uh, let's see right there. Bam. And, uh, I want you guys to definitely check it out because there's, again, I, I had such a good time reading it, the history stuff, and I've kind of got us up to about the early 2000s, and I guess we'll push forward now and talk about how how it's continued to advance, and let's just jump into the current times. I always make the joke, we're like, look, I'm 52, right, and um, my sexiest days are behind me, or well, maybe they're not. Why not have a middle-aged, sexy only fans account? Yeah, you know? yeah, there you go. And the reality is, is I, I haven't, I don't have an OnlyFans account, but I'm positive that there's some middle-aged dude. It's like, I'm the middle-aged dad bod guy, and and here's my, you know, account, and probably makes a decent living. There's definitely a, a six-figure living being a middle-aged uh, dad bod guy. Yeah, definitely. That's got to exist. Um, yeah, I was just reading an article on Vice Day about uh, sex workers over the age of 50 and how that's, you know, that's just... It's a thing that people have always been into, but like, you know, now that we have like mm -hmm. OnlyFans, people can actually say, oh, now I'm going to do it. Like, why not? Why not me? <laughs> right. <laughs> create right. your own niche. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You got to create your own niche. Um, going back a little bit of time, the market as it evolves and new products come out and apps come out and all these things, how has, how has sex played a role in development of these things? Is it just traffic or what would you say is, is the impetus behind some of the, the, like when you see a link between something like obviously PayPal, you're like, yeah, people want to pay for sex online. PayPal makes sense. But what else is yeah. out there like that? Yeah. I mean, um, 
I guess, yeah, if we're talking about like, uh, like OnlyFans and things like that, I mean, um, you know, the, the impetus for a lot of these things is, um, first of all, people need to make money. <laughs> um, during the pandemic, OnlyFans was huge. Like it exploded um, because people needed to make money from home. Um, and also people were bored and they needed to spend right. money from home. So it just was like a perfect like handshake situation. Um, so the impetus for that kind of thing is definitely like, you know, it's economic. A lot of the times it's like, okay, we need to figure out what people are into and then we kind of fulfill that need. Um, and I think that's, that's something that was like a, a common thread throughout the history of the internet is, you know, what do people want? And then what are we going to do to serve it? Because we can now because the internet exists. Um, right. So yeah, stuff like that. I mean, I think there's also like a, there's a really big need for, um, you know, authenticity and um, intimacy and being understood. And I think that's maybe a little bit trickier to quantify than like people need a job. <laughs> that's, you know, that's a little bit more soft skill, I guess, that um, that people just, uh, people very much crave wanting to be understood. And I, I think a lot of, um, a lot of the the cam models that I've spoke to who do live shows and then they do, you know, like private shows and they'll bring someone in and, you know, at the charge extra for that. But um, a lot of the times their clients for that just say, you know, I just want to talk about my day with someone who will listen. Um, you know, they can't maybe afford or access therapy. They don't have people in their lives that they can do this with. So they're just like, you know, this is someone who, you know, I like to look at and will listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you know, that's, you know, that, that fulfills that need for them. Yeah. Um, so I think those two things are definitely, they go hand in hand. Um, but, um, you know, if we're talking about like the ways that these technologies have evolved, um, that's, that's a big one is, you know, wanting to have that immediate connection with mm -hmm. another person, I think is a big kind of human need. And also it's the reason why like zoom is good. <laughs> <laughs> because it's fast and slick and people need that immediate, like, you know, if you're on a meeting and it's laggy, that's so, that's a terrible meeting. Someone's like glitching right. out. You can't get like any emotional feedback from them. Right. Um, and the same way with like a cam show, it's like, if you can't immediately interact with someone, um, have them respond to you, uh, then it's no good. So they had to make these technologies really good in order to, you know, get people to come back. Yeah. You know? I don't know if that answers your question at all. That felt like a no, tangent. No, it, it does. <laughs> and there's so much within that. I was thinking about a, a bunch of things we could discuss. Like it, um, I saw from the Bay Area and uh, the streets of San Francisco would open up and they would show like Carol Dota and like mm. you know, her show and everything. And that whole Tenderloin district, yeah. there was a lot of sexuality for sale right yeah. there. And, and, and um, that whole area has become something else because the buildings became more valuable because people didn't need to come there to, to get their rocks off, as we would say yeah. back in the old days, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, you think about that. On the other side of that, I used to produce uh, a podcast for a person, very well-known person, and we did a young uh, porn lady, um, and she was in the BDSM field, and he was talking to her. And uh, at the end of it, um, he asked me what I thought of the episode. And I thought, I don't think you should put that up because when you're asking questions of this person, she has no idea what's next. She's not like, oh, yeah, I'm taking this time to invest my money in houses. I'm, you know, she had no exit plan. Right. And mm -hmm. so she was really and, and she's in this submissive kind of role. So she's letting yeah. everybody else dictate her life in a way that I'm like, this is not sustainable. Yeah. You know? And so you wonder like, oh my God, you know, and, and we know, um, and you talk about the, the, the evolution of, of amateur girls and the explosion of that, like at yep. some point the market craves amateur girls yep. and they're going to be found, uh, mm -hmm. or made. And that just terrifies I me. Mean, I've got a daughter. It terrifies me that, you know, some girl who's exploitable for some reason, um, or, yeah. or gullible or, 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 or all the ores that yes. go in there. Wow. <sighs> You know, yeah. that's a burden, especially when we all are consuming porn online. It's like well, we're making these poor, exploited people. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think what I've learned from talking to people in the industry and porn performers who, um, you know, maybe we're in that position um, in some point in our lives. 
um, the the reason why it's an unsafe job um, and it's a lot of the times, or overwhelmingly it's a safe job, but a lot of the times people see it as an unsafe job and sometimes it really is, people get taken advantage of. Um, and the reason that it's easily exploited like that is because of the stigma against it. It's, you know, it's the reason is because of society's view of it, because people think, oh, if you're in porn, you deserve it, whatever happens. Right. Like you can't, um, you know, be sexually assaulted if you're in porn because you're there to have sex. And it's like, right. that's so far from the actual truth of like a good porn set. You know, you have a list of things that you're allowed to do, <laughs> which, right. you know, and normal, like casual sex, a lot of times we don't have that. You know, I don't, I don't think most people's sexual encounters include like a, a consent list that they check off and sign. Um, yeah, exactly. Like before you film, kind of saying, you know, this is what I'm comfortable with. Um, but because it's an industry that's very much stigmatized and discriminated against and people are vulnerable because of like the bank's reasons that we talked about before, um, it becomes unsafe uh, because, you know, it's, it's not so much inherently unsafe. Um, it's just that you know, the way society views it uh, devalues it and makes it something that is dangerous and is easily exploited. Um, so yeah, you know, people get underpaid, people get, you know, taken for a ride, you know, they get, you know, I mean, I've, I've talked to women who were in the industry that, um, you know, they had managers that they got screwed over and it's just like, sure. there's so much, uh, lack of recourse for that because of the way we talk about porn as like dirty or, um, shameful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is scary to see, to see some of these things happen for sure. <laughs> I'd be nervous if I had a daughter. It would be like, okay, be safe. <laughs> yeah. Please make good decisions. And what twenty yeah. make, reliably makes good decisions? I mean, not it's... not me when I was twenty. <laughs> oh, yeah. Same. <laughs> Same. Yeah. It's almost like they invented prison for guys like me. It's like, hey, come on. <laughs> um, what is the uh, one of the things that always confounds me is you have this very liberal open place like Portland and it also has the most strip clubs of any major city in the nation. Yeah. And you think that is, there's absolutely women being exploited. And I'm saying women, cause let's be honest about, you know, who's being exploited here, but yeah. I'm sure there's dudes too, but um, they're being taken advantage of, they're being used up, they're being sent on a life of, you know, like if they're at all inclined to addiction, they're going to meet it right there. And and uh, the folks in Portland are like, ah, it's sexual freedom, and I'm like, I don't think so. You, know, like, <laughs> you can't reliably say that when when the industry again is so powerful, it craves all this, and it's like, well, you could get this regular job over here, or you could take off your clothes and and you know be fondled by men and everything. Yeah, it's, um, I'm certainly guilty of going to strip clubs. I don't want to act like I'm a, I'm innocent with that kind of thing, but it it's confounding when you see a place like Portland, and then you know that the steps into becoming a sex worker, uh, if you might not have otherwise done that, they're, they're right there. They're paved for you, and it's obvious, and then you can end up in a place you might not ever want it to be in and wake up at yeah. 35 going, what did I do to myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of those, the issues with strip clubs, I think a lot of the times that are, you see like abusive strip club managers and things like that. Sure. Um, that is, you know, it's again, it's like, it doesn't have to be that way. It could be very safe and it could be a good living if the conditions were better. Um, but you know, you see like um, uh, strip clubs unionizing, it's becoming like a, a trend now, or it's a, it's a movement where strippers are saying, you know, we're, we're doing a service for your company, for your club. Um, you're not treating us right. So we're going to step up together and say, you know, we, we are the value of this place. So why are you not treating us better? Right? You're not protecting us. Um, so I think there is kind of a pushback against, you know, just the, the, some of the abuses that are going on in that industry. Um, I think it can be, again, it can be a really safe job. And, you know, also it's like, you know, if, if someone's stripping because they can make more money doing that, um, I don't know, maybe we should have better minimum wage. <laughs> maybe we should make it easier for people to get, you know, the, the mainstream jobs or, Right. um afford rent in a place like portland um yeah. you know it's it's yeah. kind of all these things working together yeah. um and then you have the stigma of it that makes that a very um yeah. exploitable position to be in um yeah it's tricky it's you know these are all very like nuanced <laughs> things that a lot of people just won't even we don't even talk about so i'm glad we're yeah we're bringing yeah. it up 
yeah. or just the ability to recognize what your value is as as an employee and mm -hmm. not being afraid like oh if i lose this job i'm screwed you know yeah. and then end up with like no option but to go do something like right. take clothes off or yeah start only fans you know um and again like that thing of like well what else am i going to do you know mm -hmm. and i've got to survive and this is the way i'm going to do it and hopefully you manage it but where is the resource does the government create a resource for like hey sex workers and this is like you know like you would do for anything if you're going to open a barbershop the sba would provide you with all these resources on how to learn how to get grants can you imagine a grant you're like i'm going to become a sex worker and start my own only fan <laughs> thing yeah. and then you know you get a grant from verizon and they're like <laughs> Oh God, that's a future that I would love to see happen. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> we need that. I'm gonna start uh, start lobbying for that kind of future. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. pretty funny. Uh, there was something else I was gonna uh, get into in here. Uh, the whole, the ability to to be something else, right? In in the uh, inner the world of the internet and sex. Mm -hmm. Whether like, you know, it's like, you know, um, are you even talking to a human anymore? You know, like yeah. with bots and everything else. Um, what are your thoughts on the complete, gosh, I don't know, separation from reality mm -hmm. of who you're in interacting with and what that person might be even on the outside, you know, not just catfishing, but but someone who's like, I've, I've dabbled in the world of being gender free. And, and so now I am, I, or mm -hmm. I am, I'm this thing that nobody thought of before. And, you yeah. know, as the acronym LGBTQIA, I, you know, it's like, it gets longer and longer and longer. Yeah. And you kind of put the plus at the end. You're like, I don't know. And then, but, <laughs> but all this stuff, there's a home for this on the internet to the good and to the bad. Yeah. 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 I think, um, overall, I mean, I, um, I'm kind of I'm seeing it as in more of a an optimist lens, I guess. Like I I see those kind of things as um, I think it's good to be able to express um, you know what you're to kind of experiment with what you are feeling inside. You know maybe you know we see this a lot with um, people who play um, like massive multiplayer online role playing games um, where people will choose a character and kind of live as that character and then. Um, they're like, oh, I kind of like this. Like, this is kind of what I what I feel is me on the inside. Um, do I feel bold enough to do that on the outside? Um, and I think being able to, to experiment in a safe way on the internet has been really helpful for a lot of people you know, before they kind of are ready to uh, make that kind of statement or leap or you know, even small changes in their real life. Um, so I think that's been a, a, actually a really big way that, uh, the internet has changed sexuality and sex just in our way of, you know, not that these things were already happening, but like, yeah. um, our way of being able to express them. Um, but yeah, it, it opens up a lot of questions about, you know, you know, who are we really, <laughs> we well, could get really philosophical about, it. <laughs> you know, what is real? What is reality? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, you have to get philosophical at some point, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've interviewed a lot of tech people. I used to have a show called Popping the Bubble, and I would talk to these folks who were looking into the future and developing things, or they were looking to the left and being like, I can attach these two things, right? Yeah. So all these beautiful, wonderful people, um, and we've just seen this with, with uh, Elon Musk right now, where their vision of where they're going, and then the, the shitty path. <laughs> And then yeah. the un, un, unforeseen that are like, oh my God, I didn't want to create this. I think Jack would be the first one to say, I didn't <laughs> want Twitter to be this. Yeah. You know, because Twitter yeah. was before and is now a vile place where you're like, I yeah. don't even want to go near mm -hmm. that platform because it's just full of animosity and bigotry mm -hmm. and, and all stripes, right? And yeah. so you have software people, hardware people are like, we're going to build this thing to make a better world. And it's a different world. I don't know if it's better. Are we getting. Are we getting better, worse, staying the same? Where do you think we are as, as a society? <laughs> yeah, that's hard to gauge because you know you're you're kind of looking at you know kind of looking back at the past and like what you know, are we are we better than we were then? Um, right. I think in a lot of ways we are. I think um, being more open and free about the ways that we can communicate on the internet, I think, has contributed mm -hmm. to that quite a bit. Um, but yeah, like you said, like something like Twitter, um, you know, places where people just like get online to fight. Um, I think that's really um, a shame. It's, you know, it's a really, it's an unfortunate kind of translation of what the internet was, you know, first envisioned to be. People thought it was going to be like this huge utopia and we would put all our differences aside and somehow 
being online would like solve discrimination and yeah. racism and sexism. And it was completely the opposite. It made a lot of these things worse. Um, it kind of yeah. let, you know, it let people find their people in good ways and positive ways and also in bad ways. You know, if, if your people are hateful and cruel, then you found them on the internet. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a give and take. It's there are pros and cons for both, but um, yeah, I don't like what's happening with Twitter is crazy. I'm not really sure what's going to go on there, yeah. um, but it is, it has just kind of driven itself into like this really um, in a lot of ways, like hateful place. Um, and these are problems of like moderation and like, you know, yeah. you can't moderate too much because then people lose their ability to like have free speech and then you can't moderate not enough because then you end up with just like Nazis everywhere. And it's like, right. where's the line? Um, yeah. Luckily that's not my job. <laughs> <laughs> someone else, someone smarter than me is going to figure that out one day and then yeah. uh, we'll all be better for it or not. And it'll just, or not, or explode. not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like Twitter is a great example because it's happening right now. And, and we're, sh a lot of people are realizing what a horrible place it has been for years and years and years just now. And yeah. so they're kind of jumping in midstream and it's like, oh, you missed all of the really bad stuff. And, yeah. and everybody's hands are dirty because there's all kinds of evil things. That there used to be a platform. I used to do handyman work in San Francisco mm -hmm. and it were called secret dot Lee secretly. And they had a little Fox thing. Oh, was, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was like you didn't have to be you so you could be mm -hmm. on. And what happened was is you didn't have to be you. So people were vile. Towards yeah. You. And that anonymity thing that has proven to not work. Maybe we'll figure something out later on, but people were absolutely, and that, and that platform died in part because it was, uh, cause I was like, let me check it out. I'll, I'll get, let you guys, mm -hmm. you know, say what I think. And I'm like, I think I don't want to be on your platform anymore. <laughs> yeah. you have a great conversation. And even, um, oh gosh, what's that latest one? Uh, it was kind of like everybody was kind of like on the radio and you're talking it's brand new ish. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but uh, it was a bunch of people just kind of in chat rooms again. But now oh yeah, out. yeah. And um, it, it's uh, Clubhouse. That's what it was. Clubhouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the same thing would happen in there. You would have someone talking down to you, like, "No, no, no, it's not octopi. It's octa." Like that's just the yeah. in the Latin. What are you even talking about? Why are we even? Why are you telling? Say octopuses. I don't care. <laughs> right or wrong. But why are you being shitty towards people? You know. Yeah. And so anytime you get people together. Uh, one, they're going to watch porn and two, they're going to be shitty towards one another. If yeah. there's no consequences. Absolutely. Yeah. I think those are the, the laws of human nature. You have death taxes and people being rude on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did anybody fess up to go and I have regrets about some of the things that they had done or created, um, you know, back in the past on our way to this point in the past? Um, I didn't talk to anyone who really regretted it. I didn't talk to anyone high level enough probably to do anything truly evil. <laughs> um, the people who were, who I talked to were kind of the more, the more small business operations. Um, I talked to a, uh, an engineer for Pornhub and he had some really interesting things to say about, yeah. um, like, uh, AB testing and figuring out what people were into in like real time. Um, but he didn't regret any of that. And I don't think he probably yeah. should, but like, that definitely has contributed to like a lot of the the filters that we see now with porn where it's like people are trying to, um, you know, trying to figure out what they're into uh, versus what an algorithm thinks that they're into. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that started with like Pornhub and a lot of these sites that uh, turned watching porn and, and even like YouTube, it's watching any kind of content online into um, an algorithm machine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, no, most people were, you know, most people I talked to didn't really have a lot of regrets, but um, I don't know, maybe I should ask that interview question when I talk to them. It's like, you know, Love it. Yeah. what do you, <laughs> maybe that'll be the next book is what well, you know, these people, people regretted. No regrets, but like, what would you twist? What part of that, what knob will you twist and what direction would you twist it to improve what you did? Because we're all better at doing yeah. what that was back then now, right? Yeah. So how would we adjust that? So yeah. uh, what's the future? of the internet and, and porn. I mean, what do you see is going to, has all kinds of things that we could think of easily, but what's really out there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of talk right now going on about um, the metaverse. Obviously everyone's talking about the metaverse. Um, I think there's something to that. Um, I also, and I think that because it's been a thing for a lot longer than 
I think most people realize like right. it's been the metaverse has been around for years, you know, decades. Yeah. Um, we have like second life to thank for that. And like a lot of these really early, even like muds and bulletin boards, like we, we talked sure. about that as the metaverse back in the day. Um, but I think just the live interaction now that you're seeing with um, not just VR headsets, but like when you're in a browser, even on your right. computer, um, on the desktop, you can kind of uh, talk to someone in a really like immediate way. And I think that's um, a huge part of connecting with someone is being able to speak to them in a really fast um, feedback kind of way. So I'm hoping that like some of these metaverse platforms really take off and like become more commonplace. Cause I think it would be fun to have like an interview like this in the metaverse. I think that would yeah. be really fun and, yeah, and yeah, can yeah. Get, get beyond the little squares and, you know, become like little fantasy so, versions of ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So one more real quick question, but first let me say this, everybody should get how sex changed the internet. This is a fantastic book by Samantha. And there's just a lot of, especially if you grew up like I did through the eighties, nineties, seventies era, uh, you can you'll find a lot of things that you're very familiar with if you at all were near a computer. Will we reach the point in the next oh I don't know twenty years we'll say right we're talking about the you know late nineties uh, early two thousands can we reach a point in the next twenty years where meta sex is more um, pleasurable than uh, your real sex? I think not honestly. I think I feel comfortable saying no. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I think um, I think people have been asking that question a lot about like um, like sex robots and sex dolls and like those are getting really really good. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, oh, is this gonna like replace real sex with humans? And I really don't think, at least, nothing that I can envision in the next you know fifty or hundred years could yeah. replace that connection because there's so many levels of like interaction um, and sensory inputs that you're having with another person. Um, and also just like everything before and after that, um, contribute to the experience. So I don't think so. I think it's, it could be a addition to, uh, the way that we have sex in the future, but you know, kind of like an augmentation, but right. not replacement, not a my way robot that joins you and your, your loved one. Yeah. yeah there scene. you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, in closing before I wrap this thing up. No, I think we covered so much ground. This is such a great conversation. So, Oh, thanks. All yeah. right. So, uh, actually, if you want to take off, you can. I'm going to wrap the show up. Have a great day. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Hey, thanks for watching the show. I really appreciate it. Right here, you can subscribe. Please do that. It makes the show grow. Hit that notification bell so you know which incredible guest is coming up next. Down below is the PayPal link. You can put a small subscription in. That is an enormous help. All that money goes right back into the show. And then right up over here, are the next episodes you should listen to, curated by yours truly. Thank you.